Hi, my name is Chris Thomas. Welcome to this tutorial. Here I'm going to be showing you how to use Photo Story 3, a free piece of software from Microsoft which makes it really easy to create photo slideshows. It's really good to use in the classroom for creating photo slideshows, but also for exhibiting children's work. I'm going to go ahead and create a slideshow of children's paintings that have been done on our William Morris theme. So to start, I'm going to go ahead and launch Photo Story. When it launches, it's going to ask me whether I want to create a new project, edit an existing project, or play a story. A story is basically a photo slideshow. So I'm going to go ahead and begin a new story. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and import some pictures. I've got some scanned in images saved on my desktop here. Now if you had lots of images you wanted to use, it's probably worth using a shortcut. And the shortcut is Control A. Pressing Control A on the keyboard will select all. It will basically select everything that is inside that folder. So if you had 50 to 100 photos to include in your slideshow, that's a really good way of saving some time. So once I've selected the images that I'd like to use, I'm going to click on OK. Photo Story will analyse the images and place them along a timeline along the bottom, as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and select my first image here. Now we can affect these images slightly, for example if we took a photo in a low light condition we can actually automatically adjust the quality of the image by clicking on this button here. Now this is going to produce some slightly interesting effects with scanned in paintings like this, but I'll show you how it works anyway. So as you can see it's automatically adjusted that image making the paper whiter and the green a lot greener. The other thing we can do is actually to rotate the images. Now I know that this painting should be 90 degrees clockwise, so I can click on this rotation arrow to turn that round. Now the problem with doing that is we end up with black bars either side of the image, but we can actually get rid of those by clicking on this remove black borders button. What will happen is Photo Story will work out a way of zooming in on the image or the photo so that the black bars can be removed. Now if you've got really high quality photos this isn't going to be a problem at all, but if you've got low quality images you might find that you begin to get blocky images. But this looks fine to me, so I'm going to click on yes to say that I want to accept the after image in my story. It's then going to search for any other images along my timeline which also have black borders. Here's one here, but I'm not too happy with how this has worked out the zoom. I actually want to include those two prints at the top of the image. So all I have to do is click on this box and drag it to the top to create my own selection. And you can see it then updates the after window. So I'm happy with that, so I'm going to click on yes to accept that change. And then it finds my final image here. Now I want this one actually to zoom in on the bottom right image. So I'm going to move my box here and crop in just on that bottom right drawing there. It's now telling me that it's successfully removed the black borders and as you can see we've got no more black borders on these images here. Now I know that these are the images that have been affected because they're slightly greyed out and also we've got a flag telling me that a special effect has been applied to this image. The other thing we can do from this screen is to change the order of the images. So for example, if I know that the image I'm selected on at the moment would work better towards the beginning of my slideshow, all I have to do is click and drag and put it where I would like it to go, like that. So once we're happy that we've got our images in the right order and that we've applied any colour correction to them, we can click on Next. From the next screen we can now apply special effects. Special effects are different to colour corrections. Colour corrections are intended to fix an image or a photo which hasn't quite come out very well. But effects are used actually to create special effects. So let me show you how this could work with the chalk and charcoal option. So as you can see it's applied that effect creating a black and white image. Now I don't really like what it's done there so I'm going to try a different one. I'm going to try wash out. And again, I'm not really happy with that either. So third time lucky, let's go for negative. Okay, I like what it's done there, so I'm going to stay with that. If you couldn't find an effect that worked, then all you have to do is click on none and it will remove any special effects. The other thing we can do from this window is actually to add some text to overlay over our image. So this could be a title or the name of the child who actually produced this painting. So I'm going to go ahead and add some text now. As you can see it's now added that text to the centre of the screen, but I don't really want it there, so I can use the buttons on the right to choose whether it goes to the top, in the middle, or at the bottom, and again whether it goes to the left, to the centre, or to the right. I'd like to leave it in the bottom right, but as you can see now the black colour isn't really working too well. 
So clicking on the font button here will allow me to select a new colour and also a new font. OK, I'm happy with that. I can now go ahead and apply some text to some other images. All I have to do is click on the image on the timeline and type my text. As you can see, I've now added some text to the first three images so I can go on to the next screen. From here, I can actually record a narration for each image. So you could, for example, get the children to actually come and describe their painting. All you have to do is type some notes here to help the child remember what they have to say and then click on record. So I'm going to go ahead and enter some notes to help me. And once I'm happy, all I do is click on record. Here is a selection of artwork we produced on William Morris. Then clicking on preview will play me my narration back. Here is a selection of artwork we produced on William Morris. OK, I'm quite happy with that, but you may have noticed that that first painting was very static. It was just sat on the screen, not moving. I can actually change that by customising the motion. Motion being the movement of images as they play. So what I can do is I can actually specify my own start and end position. So this is effectively where the screen is zoomed in on. So I'm going to start by creating a zoomed in section on the left hand side on this print here. And then I want my end position to be the whole painting. Now I could set my own duration for this motion, but I actually want to leave it on automatic. What that's going to do is to work out how long the motion needs to be to make sure that all of my narration and my music work well together. So I'm going to leave it like that and click on preview to see how this looks. Here is a selection of artwork we produced on William Morris. OK, I far prefer that. As you can see, it's a great way of picking out detail in an image. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to click on Save and then click on Close. I now want to add some motion to my second image here. So I select the image, click on Customize Motion, and from here I actually want to start fully zoomed out and then zoom right in on the petals of the flower. So I go to my End Position, drag these corners until I've got a suitable size box, and then place it over the petals like this. OK, I'm quite happy with that. The other thing we can change from this screen is the transition. This is the movement from one image to the next, how it actually fades from one picture to the next. We've got a whole host of options here, so I'm just going to try some of these to see how they look. Right, I'm happy with that transition, so I'm going to stick with that. Again, I could specify my own duration, but I'm going to leave this on automatic and let the software work out how long it should be. So all I need to do now is click on Save and Close. I could now go and apply a motion and a transition to each of these photos in turn to create a nice effect, but I'm happy that this is working OK, so I'm going to click on Next. From this screen here, we can select or create our own music. The software actually makes it possible to create your own music to play over the top of your slideshow. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how you do that. All you have to do is click on Create Music and then select a genre to start with. I'm going to go for Pop and then I can select a style within that. We'll go for R&B and then I can select a band, I suppose a collection of instruments to use. We'll go for Jazzy. And then finally, the moods here. I'm going to try one with a sad mood. By clicking play here, we'll play the music back to me. Let's see how this works. Well, that's a good start, but I think that's a little bit too busy, especially with my narration over the top. So what I can do is I can actually change the intensity. I'm going to give this a low intensity, which is going to remove some of the instrumentation from the track. Let's hear how that sounds now. And just to illustrate what that's doing, this is what it would sound like with a high intensity. So 
I'm going to put that back on low intensity and I'm also going to affect the tempo here just to slow it right down. I'm happy with that so I simply click on OK. The next thing we need to do is to adjust the volume of the music. This is either music that you've created or music that you've imported. We need to do this so that we can hear the narration very clearly over the music. Now I know that this music is going to be too loud to begin with so I'm going to drag that down there and then click on preview to hear how this sounds. Here is a selection of artwork we produced on William Morris. Right, I still think that's a little bit too loud, so I'm going to drag that right down there and click on preview again. Here is a selection of artwork we produced on William Morris. Right, I'm happy with that. As I said before, if you didn't want to create your own music, you can actually import some music into your slideshow, and you do that by clicking on select music, and then finding an MP3, WAV, or Windows Media audio file somewhere on your computer but I'm going to stick with the music that I've created. The final screen is where I select what I want to do with my finished video. I'm going to leave this on the first option here to save it for playback on my computer, so I'd like to play this on my interactive whiteboard. Next, I need to give it a name, and then clicking the settings button at the bottom allows me to specify the quality for my finished movie. Now, because I'm playing this back on my computer, I want quite a large video, so I'm going to go for number three here, which is 800 by 600 pixels, which should pretty much fill my screen. Once I'm happy, I click on OK and click on Next. Photo Story is then going to go ahead and combine all of my images, all of my music and my narrations and create a finished video file. Depending upon how many images you've got in your file will affect how long this will take. So we'll come back when this is finished. So there we are, you can see it's finished producing that video and it's asking me what I'd like to do next. Now before I do either of those things, I'm actually going to go ahead and save this project. It's worth knowing that the video file that you've just created is a combination of all those images and music and as a result it can't actually be opened in Photo Story 3. So if you want to open up the video to make some changes to anything you've done, you really need to save the project. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. OK, once that's saved, I can now click here to view my finished photo story. Here is a selection of artwork we produced on William Morris. So as you can see, Photo Story 3 makes it really easy to create photo slideshows, maybe of a school trip, but also of work children have produced. This video could then be taken and added to a school blog or a school website, which is a great way of exhibiting children's work. Thanks very much for watching.